Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, sizable help in the trenches for the Red Raiders. Chris freaks me out a little bit, or does he? We talk conifers and week one favorites, and I might discover I don't know where Wyoming is. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Everything runs through Lubbock. Great to see you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making us your first listen every day on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And now check us out on the Sirius XM app. That's SXM in the app store he's the only chris level i'm casey cowan and chris we're talking a lot of red raider football today and i'm excited because we are kicking it off in the trenches if you don't like football if you just like points if you're just there for pomp and circumstance maybe this won't be the conversation for you if you're the mom of a wide receiver but if you're the mom of say a left guard this is your conversation today because we're talking offensive line chris you and i off the air uh, discussed a couple of days ago, just kind of projecting what a conversation might look like this week, some things going on with the Red Raiders. And one thing you said was that shopping is still happening along the offensive line, still seeking help up front. And we're going to get to a bag that they took home, I guess, uh, specifically in a big four-star commitment here this week, coming up in just a moment. But I'm curious, just kind of bigger picture, what does that really look like when we're talking about help sought along the offensive line? You know, positionally, is it specific or is it a utility kind of guy? And the immediacy with which they want that help to be able to make an impact, what kind of realm are we in there? Because uh, I know this is a big year for that group. We're expecting improvement. The personnel has changed a little bit, some new faces, but also just some same faces in new places. Can you sort all that out? So there's a lot to process here with this. So I'm just kind of curious, what is – O-line shopping mission objective, I guess, if you could just give me a big picture view first. What's it look like? So remember our conversation about uh, the Kentucky receiver that was offered uh, a few weeks ago. This was a portal guy, and it kind of raises like the old eyebrows. You furrow your brow going, huh, what is going on here? We got a little uh, wide receiver offer, and I hadn't really – Felt like the wide receiver was a need and all that. Well, along those lines, I think what they have determined is that, you know, and and, and we put together the the Matador Club conversation with, hey, they're going to pay this many guys this much money. And I think where where you're at is you, you're you're really toward the end of those those kinds of commitments. I don't think you have any scholarships to give right now for for this coming fall. I think you've given all those up, but I do think you have a little NIL money, which is what the the, the Kentucky receiver that was offered. This was going to be, you know, they've offered a Baylor uh, defensive back uh, as well, and I think that's coming from NIL money. However, Mm. however, we we talked about in the spring that if there was going to be – you know, if you go shopping in the portal, it was going to be an inside linebacker and an offensive tackle. And I think that they have determined that if they've got a little NIL money left, which they do, if they can go find somebody that is like maybe at a junior college, maybe is at, you know, kind of a, I know, an off the grid type player that can help them at tackle. Cause I do think they've reached out to a couple of junior college type guys that are, and this is spe- specifically offensive tackle uh, type guy mm. and somebody that is can enroll immediately and, and be on the team this fall, theoretically. Yeah. <clears throat> now you're asking for a lot there because yes. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's so picked over that you're kind of trying to find a needle in a haystack. But they have reached out to a couple of guys. And I think, you know, it, it's it, it's immediate – you know, help. And, and, and what, I don't think that they're looking for anybody to come in and start. You're not even looking yeah. for anybody to come in and necessarily be a, a top backup per se, but it's gotta be somebody 
that adds to your room that you think can play and may and play eventually, certainly, but maybe, you know, offer up some immediate help, but also has multiple years left to, to play. This isn't somebody that they're not trying to find somebody that is just going to get them through this season. They want somebody that's got two or three or four years uh, to roll here. And so don't rule any, anything out there as far as like a, mm. a, a summer edition. And again, it'll be met with little fanfare, this will be somebody that hopefully you don't hear hear their name at all this season. But I think you the point still stands. They're looking for a little more help for for the Landon Petersons and the Ty Buchanans and and, and guys like that. I think you know you've got uh, Daniel Sill and you've got Caden Carr. They were the two freshmen that that you know were, were showed up early. I think they're still possibly a year away, which is normal for offensive line. Yeah. So I think they're trying to fill in a, a gap of sorts. And I think they've identified that as a, as, as a slight need. It's not red flags. Oh my God, we got to go find somebody. Just get us a body in here. Um, you know, so anyway, I don't how, know if I've. How off the grid are we talking? Because my ears are perking up. Eligibility still intact for your boy. And I am a former emergency <laughs> fullback left guard, 150 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. So you coach McGuire, how off the grid you really want to go. Uh, Chris, I was- KCPS Cowan. <laughs> and the PS stands for pure and sexy. That's right. <laughs> One of those accurate descriptors. I'll let you make a guess as to which. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube, you might have noticed my face while Chris was uh, describing what he was describing. It was consuming that very calmly, very smoothly, like, um, you know, it wasn't freaking me out at all. But internally, if you could see what was going on, I'm a little freaked out by what Chris just said because O-line obviously is one of those spots where you really need to take a step forward, Chris. And I almost feel like you were the uh, the unmarked car, the plainclothes policeman just cruising down the highway. Then all of a sudden you're talking about off the grid, junior college, and you're slapping the siren on the roof and all of a sudden it's woo, 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 <laughs> like warning time. Should I be freaking out about this at all? Or is it just simply – because you did say – Look, we're not looking at like starter, not even maybe top end backup, but we're talking more body. But that's still maybe knowing that they could be going to those links to try and get that uh, in the building by 2023 um, or the 2023 season. I, I don't know. That does shake me up or, or puck me up just a little bit. Am I going uh, too far? You, you've had a few recruiting class. You know, th- offensive line is, is one of the uh, trickiest. Um, because there's a big picture conversation to talk about when you talk about recruiting offensive linemen and and you've, you know, you're typically every single year, you're going to take three to six offensive linemen in every class. Okay. And it probably is closer to the, the six number than it is the, you know, the, the three, but there's some occasions where you don't, you don't take that many. Whenever you recruit uh, really big people uh, out of high school, you know, sometimes, um, you know, the, the, they, they've just – the game has been easier. You know, it, it's a weird evaluation, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like, trying to evaluate uh, offensive linemen out of high school is is tricky because and, – and, and I guess – I'm not going to get into a long conversation here, but to sum it up, you know, you, you're, you're going to miss on, on half, like you do with most recruits. But re- when you recruit mm-hmm. big people, there's reasons why, you know – are they so successful because they were bigger than everybody that they played? Yeah. Okay. And then, then we get, we put them on the field it, w- with everybody that's as big and they just, they, they don't hang. Cause you, you know, offensive line wise, you, you're, you're looking for, you know, you, you want them to be mean. You want to, and, and there's a lot of guys that come in and it's just, it's too much for them or they, or they end up being a bit softer than you think. It's just a, yeah. it's a tougher position to evaluate. And so you've had a few you know, recent recruiting classes where you, you know, you lose one of the guys that you sign, they, they just bail out, they quit, they get hurt, you know? Um, and, and, and if for whatever reason, there's more churn with an offensive line group than there is at other positions. And it's one of the positions it, it's really, that's one of the bigger rooms, the, that, that you would, you would term it on, on a, on a college football team uh, because, <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna have. I mean, not not literally, but well, I mean, also, also, literally. Yeah, you're you're gonna have 17 
18, 20 guys that play that position because you've got your starters and then you, you've got the babies that you're trying to grow up, man. And you don't yeah. want, you know, the, the, the guy that we'll talk about here in a little bit that committed recently, that, you know, look, you're, you're, you're trying to say, hey, man, you're going to redshirt when you get here. And then and then maybe by year three, you're, you're a starter. And maybe you're two, you kind of – that's that's the natural flow. So – to, to wrap that up, you're, you're trying to maybe go find somebody that can fill in one of those gaps. Gotcha. Um, I, I will say this. If they don't find what they're looking for, if they don't find somebody that they feel like can can help them and help them eventually, they're not going to do it. Um, you know, But I just know that – that scavenger hunt continues. How about that? You know, they're, they're looking for, yeah, they're looking for a little like help there if they can find it. But uh, yeah, you, I'm thinking about as you're talking about like the transition of an old lineman during his time uh, on campus. I'm just thinking about like imagining a guy like Louis Vasquez when he leaves, See, he yeah. seems like a 45 year old man <laughs> versus like 18 year old guy that shows up for his first semester of college. I mean, it's just, it is a, a big time transition. There's no question about that. And I guess I would say that, you know, while some of you may be excited about like highly decorated wide receivers, you're competing with Texas or Oklahoma or the Aggies for how about an O lineman uh, you're competing with those same ones for that. That's what I'm getting excited for. We are the offensive lineman mothers show. Ask Mrs. Stotts. Shout out to mama Stotts. Stats. Gotta keep screwing it up. Oh yeah. I'm I was about to say you're in trouble now. Retract it. Let me, let me start that over. Shout out to Mrs. Stats. I know it was right all along. I was trying to trip up Chris. That's all that was happening there. Okay. Tell me about four stars from Prosper, Texas, in the form of Ellis Davis, who gives the Red Raiders uh, a commitment here this week, Chris. And just like we're describing there, I mean, the timeline for impact, you would like to be sort of long. You don't want a guy to have to come be a true freshman and, and say, hey, uh, go ahead and make a hand for us. But a year, maybe two, uh, till you'll see an impact. But Buddy, I love seeing this come across the wire. Uh, big time get as far as the accolades, and it's happening in the trenches for Coach Hamby uh, and the Texas Tech offensive line. So tell me about Ellis Davis. But first, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On and America's number one sports book. Find out why today by downloading the FanDuel app in the App Store. Safe, secure, easy to use, or head on over to fanduel.com slash Locked on. And if you're a new customer, your timing is perfect because right now new customers qualify for that no sweat first bet, which is now up to $2,500 in bonus bets back to you if your first bet don't bank. That's right. $2,500 coming back at you in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win with the no sweat first bet. You're always getting paid instantly with FanDuel and that's just one part of why it's America's number one sports book. So get busy today. Head on over to fanduel.com slash locked on or download the FanDuel app from the App Store. Again, that's fanduel.com slash locked on and get started with the no sweat first bet with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. A big time get as far as the accolades and it's happening in the trenches for Coach Hamby uh, and the Texas Tech offensive line. So tell me about Ellis Davis. Yeah, it's a bit, you know, uh, I think trenches, you know, is what gets Joey McGuire excited. So anytime they add O line or D line help and been big people, he just, uh, this is way, the way he feels uh, that, you know, as much as we talk about like on yesterday's show about Tyler Shuck and the starting quarterback and all that, <laughs> man, it's, it's up front and that's where you win it. That's where, you know, he helped build the, uh, that Baylor situation and into to where they won the the, the Big Twelve championship and, and all those things, but yeah, Ellis Davis will be an offensive tackle for you uh, out of Prosper, uh, very highly ranked and all that. If you follow it, you know, or you can follow, you know, hey man, Florida State offered him, Oklahoma offered him, LSU, I think Tennessee, Auburn, Penn State, uh, Kansas, TCU. I mean, just on and on. He, he had a, he had a variety of different offers, but he'd been out here quite a bit. And I think he, you know, he built relationships, man. And that's what the staff is so good at. They have, uh, they've done a really good job of identifying early. Cause I believe that, uh, you know, Ellis Davis, his first ever scholarship offer was from Texas tech. And I think mm -hmm. that, 
you know, he he had and, and with that, he had made several visits out here prior to just being here last weekend when it was an official visit. And so that they, they just did a, a good job of evaluating early, identifying, and then kind of starting the process much earlier. And then at that point, everybody else is kind of, you know, playing playing catch up a bit. And so uh I think this was a yeah, this was a big one. And it, it makes your fourth offensive line commit for this current class they may that they'll probably take one more and it's a smaller recruiting class and so that gives you an idea on the importance of this position is that they may only sign 18 to 22 prospects this year just depends and and it looks like five of them so basically uh 25 percent of this class will be at, at offensive line uh, but you've got uh, Jacob Ponton, you've got uh, Holton Hendricks, you've got Case Along, and then uh, Ellis Davis to go to go along with it. And they'll still, I think, add add another one, specifically if they can find uh, the right one. There's a few of them that have been on campus recently that there are takes uh, no matter what. But, you know, you, you go back to, you know, the conversation we were having a second ago, and you, you forget, you know, we were talking about the churn, you forget. So I, I mentioned to you four names that are on the commitment list right now. But like, think about this past cycle of the of your season. You lose Cade Briggs. You lose Ethan Card. You lose Michael Shanahan. These were all portal guys. You lose Ethan Card. Uh, did, did I already say his name? He said Ethan. Yeah. Yeah. Ethan Card. Well, uh, Weston Wright could have come back for another yep. year. He he decides to. To, to go on to the next level. So th- there was, there's a lot more change at this position than, than you realize. That's why, you know, the Ellis Davis and adding four, you know, commitments and, and potentially adding to that. And then maybe finding somebody that else is out there that can maybe help you at a prep school or a junior college or who knows what. I don't think there's anybody necessarily in the portal uh, yet, but I mean, I just, I, I just, get, try to get everybody to remember back. I mean, the last six months, I mean, the, the, you've lost some, you know, most of these guys were, had a year or two left, but still the point still stands. They are not on your team anymore. You know, th- there's, there's, you know, depth uh, that you, you are looking to replace. So, but it, it really starts with a, a day like uh, yesterday when Ellis Davis says, yes, this is where I want to, to go. And he, he turns down a lot of uh, big time programs to come to, to Texas Tech, which is you know uh, a, a big time program according to Ellis Davis, and that's what you want to hear. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, at a position, you always want to hear it from. Before we move on, Chris, jog my memory really quickly because your offensive line coach Stephen Hamby was a part of. With all due respect, those that came before, I was really paying attention to Texas Tech, and I know there were some really good ones. You got Doak Walker Award winners, multiple, so there had to be some really good ones. But 2008, greatest offensive line I've ever seen in red and black. And Stephen Hamby was a part of that. How did that come to be put together? Was that a Mike Leach-initiated thing? Was it positional coach-initiated thing? Was it the James Blanchard, if there was such a thing, of 2005 (laughs) kind of thing? You, you were there for it. You were covering it at that time. That is the pinnacle, uh, certainly this millennium, <laughs> for Texas Tech offensive line play. You had behemoths up front along the offensive guy, uh, line. Guys like Rylan Reed that look like they're you know chiseled out of stone. How did that group come to be put together? Who were some of the names, maybe recruiter or coaching-wise, uh, that led to, to such an outstanding group that year? Yeah, and I'm trying to remember, uh, Cowan. Boy, you 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 caught me off guard there because I'm trying to remember. I don't. I can't remember if Bill Biedenbaugh was still. I don't know if he was. If that was uh, Biedenbaugh or if that was like Matt Moore, that was the offensive line uh, coach. But it, it was. Could it have been some Biedenbaugh recruiting? And yeah, well, yeah, more it, in no way. It, it, that, that definitely was uh, uh, the truth. And and, mm-hmm. and Mike always put a, uh, a heavy emphasis on the O line. You know that they felt like okay, we can get all these bells and whistles with what, what we want to do on offense, but if we can't protect, you know, it, it doesn't really. And I remember those conversations, like and before some of those games, and it, Mike was famous for saying to the offensive line coach you know, uh, before some of those big games, you know, in, in those – in 06, 07, 08 seasons, whenever they were, you know, were really good, you know, he, he'd always look at the old line coach and be like, 
we're going to be just fine if we can protect. Like, like you know, <laughs> it's all it's all on your group, man. So group. everything else is in place. We got the game plan drawn up, everything. but you know, like the lights work, the PA is great. Yes. It's just all on you, buddy. Yeah, that's right. And so, <laughs> but like you know, the, the Ryland Reed thing is a great point, Cowan, because that is that was like what I'm talking about in the immediate. That's an off the radar off the ad. Radar, yeah. This was a 26, 27 year old that was a former baseball player. <laughs> and everybody's like, who is this guy? Where has he come from? He he was a grown man. He this is like what BYU trots out there on a daily basis. <laughs> um whenever whenever you have guys that are that are in their mid mid twenties in some cases. And so when he came in here. I wasn't real sure what to think. Great guy. I loved the uh, Ryan Reed was awesome. And but he was a minor league baseball player and he still had some some football or some eligibility left and he was going to use it on on the football thing, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. It was yeah. just an off the radar, you know, we found you, we found a, there's some gray area here and he still got some eligibility left. Let's see what happens and he ends up being, you know, one of your starting tackles. You know, Brandon Carter, though, was uh, was on that group, and he was a homegrown, you know, recruit from day one, and you, you grew him up into the mohawk, tatted up, face paint wearing <laughs> guy that he was, you know, and that's what I'm talking about. It's like he was he, he was fiery, and Hamby was fiery, and, oh, yeah. you know, and they, they had an attitude about him, and, and it was, you know, it wasn't just they were big. But it wasn't just about that. I mean, they played really good football. They play, played really well, but they had an identity, you know. And so that's what you're, you know, that's what you're trying to to do here. But yeah, jo- Joey will tell you flat out, you win with big people. Period. Yep. Yeah, I love good quarterbacks and receivers, and you're, we're going to hear a lot about Micah Hudson this coming week and how special he will be. And and trust me, that that kind of stuff gets the people going. The football coach yes. though <laughs> will t- will tell you. If if our big people, and that's why the SEC wins so much, man. They typically have better big people than everybody else. Yeah, that's just the way the it goes. Yes. Yeah. Why is Georgia so good? I mean, the, you know, right up front. You know that that's why. Uh, and so, yeah, you're trying to get there, man. It looks like just for clarification's sake, uh, beaten bar, beaten bow, uh, out in 2006. Yeah, so you Matt, think he went? He went with Sonny Dykes. Uh, I was remembering that he went with Sonny Dykes to Arizona, I believe. Yep. And then, so Matt Moore on patrol. So you had yeah. some recruiting there initially, and then you had the job finished uh, there eventually. But man, the great wall of Lubbock that was in place in 2008. And you had some some great pros get out of there as well. Guys like the aforementioned Louis Vasquez, Manny Ramirez. I mean, that, that was a timeline that really featured some fantastic groups. And uh, it was just always a story every Saturday because some broadcaster that just woke up from a coma had to freak out about the splits too, you know? So it was just always... Always a topic of conversation. Wouldn't mind getting back there, building inside out. That's what you do uh, if you're trying to turn the wheel. Still, even in this variety of 2023 football, as they attempt to outlaw every, every bit of physicality from the game. Still a little left, however. Okay, we're sticking with football as we wrap it up today. Coming up next, September 2nd, minus 13. These are two numbers that hopefully combine for good things for Texas Tech. More on that next on Locked On at Texas Tech. Thanks for making Locked On Texas Tech a part of your day. Whenever, wherever, however you're making it happen, we appreciate you making us your first listen every day on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Okay, before we're out of here today, Chris, we have something tangible to hold on to. When it comes down to the 2023 football season, it's kicking off September 2nd. And I guess you have to be kind of a degenerate of one variety of another. We're just college football degenerates. We love it. We're fans of it. But also you could be a gambling degenerate and see things like this and be just as excited. Minus 13 is the first number we see for your Red Raiders. It will be Wyoming that is the scene of ball game number one. And Chris, th- this is a tricky start to the season. I mean, it's been on my, my mind, obviously, a little bit atypical of a start for a football team as you, you have an unusual road trip. And I don't know what to make of the Cowboys yet competitively, but you better look out because week one, home away, or regardless of the, the caliber of opponent, as we know, uh, can often be an adventure for every football team as you kind of learn what you are 
when the lights come on. So minus 13, the initial number there. Surprised at all, or, or what'd you make of it? You know, I, I think that there was, because uh, I saw this posted yesterday. I think one of the sports books actually released all opening weekend, you know, lines or early spreads. And I had actually heard a couple weeks ago, you know, somebody mentioned, yeah, Texas a 14 point favorite. Uh, against Wyoming and now it, it was I see it posted and it's minus 13 so about the same thing I didn't know what to think I thought it would be I don't know eight, eight or nine points if you'd ask me hey what do you think the line will, will be yeah look Wyoming is, road trips are interesting I think uh, you, you, you're dealing with altitude Wyoming is a uh, they go to the I think that they've won I think they have a winning record in five of their last seven years uh, I think that um, one of the years they didn't was the COVID year, and then one of the other years that they didn't, they were 500. They were like six and six or whatever. That can so be this prickly. is, yeah, this is a team that goes to they go to bowl games, they win, they're used to winning. This is be a very high profile game for them that they're playing a, a you know playing a power five team and much less hosting them. CBS, be, I forgot CBS, about that. CBS, yeah. and it will be sold out. Um, and, and I think there'll be a lot of people watching Texas Tech and they're going to, you know, want, want to be impressed or looking for reasons to go or, like, what's all the hype about? Yeah, cut us off at the knees immediately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that <laughs> yeah. it's you, you mentioned that 08 year because that's how that's how that year was. Mm -hmm. um, it was more of a beauty contest. It wasn't. It wasn't if you won or lost. It was like, how bad did you hammer the other team? How bad did you beat them? I remember like leaving Reno, Nevada in a similar game. And I think you'd won 35 to 19 and you kind of pulled away late. But it wasn't just overly impressive. Yep. You know, Eric Morris had a punt return for touchdown. I think your yep. defense rose up a little bit. And and I just I just remember the talk afterwards was like, man, I just don't know if we're any good. But it, it – it, 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 it and you were you were just fine, but and so that there's a lot of similarities to, to that game at Nevada and this yep. game, in my opinion, about uh, because again, just winning in some ways won't be enough to satisfy fans. Uh, but who who uh, here, here's the thing about Wyoming, they they have they have a coach there that's been there for a uh, Craig Bowl, it's been there for a while. They are Iowa State. This is who they are. Mm. They're really good defensively. They run the ball. They don't throw it very well. This is a team that averaged, I think, like 21 points a game last year is all in offense. They're not going to – I think you'd love to try to get into a shootout with them. They will have a hard time keeping up, but they are very good and very sound uh, on on defense. And I think that that's the, that's the thing that, you know, you need to – uh, remember about them is it's a, it's a tricky, it's a tricky situation. So can you go up there and win 14 to 10 like you did at Iowa state last year? I don't know. I got to say, I'm not going to be one that's <clears throat> all that invested in style points week one. I, I just win baby is kind of where I'm at because while the off season hype train is going to be a lot of fun to ride. Uh, I just continue to remember that you were seven and five and the regular season and eight and five overall, which is not some earth shattering record. Great start to a career. We hope, uh, and exciting for us personally, given what we know that included, uh, as tech fans, who you beat and, and how you did it in some really tight games, uh, not trying to diminish it, but I I'm not look 2008. You're like number 12. I think preseason team, you had high, high, high hopes. And there's some of that going on this year. You're not going to be that highly ranked, um, heading into the year, but, Chris, I, I'm just looking for uh, head above water whenever you return to Lubbock after that one. Get a win. Good teams win. Great teams cover. So it'd be nice if you'd win by 13 or more. Um, but just go get a win because this road trip against a proud program, uh, one that's typically a tough team, is not going to be an easy one. And, and like I said, and you've heard this cliche probably if you followed college football or any football the jump from week one to week two can be the biggest jump you make all year, boy. <laughs> so it's always kind of a whose voice was that? Who 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 are you imitating there? I want to know. I want to I want a name attached to that. There was a little Hank Kill, but also some Bill Dendy. Shout out to Bill Dendy. I like uh, it. Driver Zed, Sex Ed, and JB Football <laughs> Coach, and former Junction Boy with uh, Bear okay. Bryant and the gang. Once upon a time down in College Station. Very so nice. Hard Scrabble, old boy. 
Uh, he had to put a, he was also like a health teacher half the semester, you know, it was one of those classes. And uh, he had to put on once upon the, ta uh, the tape that showed us the miracle uh, of birth. And he just basically hit play and said, if you have any questions, go see the counselor. And he left the room for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and none of us have been right essentially since then. So shout out to Coach Dendy. I think they did the same thing, got the same uh, exhibition there again. There's a uh, long line at the counselor's office. Boys. That's right. Yeah. Oh, there was a long line. It was a busy, busy day yeah. uh, at the counselor's yeah. office. And it was even crazier because he'd actually got the, the health tape mixed up with the ag tape, the 4-H tape. So we were like, huh? This is what... <laughs> A lot of questions that day. A lot of confused Wildcats over in Littlefield, Texas, America. Uh, and by the way, I've been checking out Wyoming Stadium. Conifers in the background. Like this is, a, you know, like at a ballpark, baseball, you're like, well, what are we looking at behind the pitcher? Um, you know, what's the batter seeing? Or what's the pitcher looking at? By Has Tyler Shuck ever thrown a pass into a sea of conifers on the other side of the I don't know, man. So there's a now whole tell the of... people that don't know what a conifer is what that is. Now, I'm not sure I know what it is, but I think it's a pine tree of some kind. I think yeah. it's like the kind you find in forests, right? They've got like uh, pine oh, you, cones on them or something. You're, you're yeah, it, this is mountainous. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And, I just like and, saying the word. I don't really know if I know what it is. Because I think a lot of people, Cowan, for that game, I think a lot of the fans are going to stay in Colorado Springs. Just to really? give you an idea, of, yeah, it's just it's like a forty-five minutes hour away, and I think it's very difficult to get to Laramie and get to Cheyenne, and so okay. I think Colorado Springs is a little more of a uh, an ease on the travel, and I think that there's a lot of people that uh, that will stay in Colorado Springs and just kind of drive over, but uh, just to give you an idea of interesting of location, you've so, given me maybe my first idea, and now I have something to do after the show, uh, figure out if I know whether or not where Wyoming is. Because I didn't, think, <laughs> I didn't think anything was going to be that close to Colorado Springs. Yes. <laughs> well, okay. and, and that's why, you know, all honesty, when you see this on on paper, and and you're not, this is not a state that we're all super familiar with because you're not playing them in anything, and it's just not really in our yeah. our general, you know, everyday conversation. It, you know, when I first saw it, I thought the same as you did. I'm like. This is what are, what are we doing? Am I, why are we going to Canada? You know, basically, you know, <laughs> right. it, it, it's an hour and a half flight. I mean, it's really not. Okay. Th this is like playing in, in Colorado or playing in, in one of the Kansas schools or Iowa State or whatever. It's it's really, you know, um, it's not a lengthy road trip. Again, I think that the altitude is going to be the tricky part. And the fact that you, you know, ha maybe have to if you're going, you may have to stay, you know, outside of Laramie and 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 and. Yeah. set up camp in, in Colorado Springs. But yeah, this is a, you know, th this is a natural kind of, in a, in a weird way, kind of a regional kind of, kind Let's of game, go. you know, I mean, it's not, not uh, off the grid uh, too much at all. Do you know, uh, I, I don't know this answer. Do we have Wyoming coming to love it? Is this a return? Yes, th this was, uh, they're not coming here until like, uh, I think like 27 or 28. And, and this oh, okay. was the, this was part of the COVID screw up. Uh, they were supposed to come here the COVID year all bets were off, and so, yeah, I think I think it's probably frustrating that you're having to make this a home and home, like where you have to go to them first, and then they don't gotcha. they don't come back here for another four or five years. But that that was why it was that when everything happened with COVID, you, the whole the non conference kids just like you know, hey, on a Monday afternoon they're sending out tweets. We need a game for Saturday. Anybody down? <laughs> you know, like yeah, we're we're good. And then you and like okay, agreed to opponent. Uh, we'll, we'll kick it off at like four o'clock, man. If anybody wants to televise it, let's do it. You know, I mean, it was just like, <laughs> yeah, so willy, willy nilly, but uh, but that you was get part a tea of time. You want to get <laughs> yeah. a kickoff time for Saturday? Oh, yes. Lord. Okay. Well, I like to ask a question every day in the YouTube comments. So maybe just today, the question will be an honor code on this without looking at a map. Do you know where Wyoming is? Let us know, uh, in the uh, YouTube comments. I, I get a little lost, you know, going north. I try to stay in my region. It's like, North of Cress, I don't even know what's out there. It's like Mount Rushmore and then Canada. Cress, Mount Rushmore, Canada, <laughs> in some some order. I think the order yeah. is correct. But anyway, help us out in the YouTube comments in a variety of ways. As you tell, we could use it. Okay, Chris, thanks for the perspectives and insight as always, my man. Appreciate the time. Enjoyed it. And we'll be back around tomorrow to do it again. Let's do it, man. Keep hope alive, everybody. <laughs> You got it. He's Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. We're back on the other side for another round on Locked on Texas Tech.